Hello, everybody. How are you today? How are you today? We are going to be playing around with something called Dash Tune. Saw it on uh, Wes Roth's channel and uh, thought I would try it out. And uh, we're also going to be playing around with a brand new thing that I think is on Hugging Face that I just happened to run across called Comic Act, uh, Com AI Comic Factory. And we're going to play around with it. I might have to take my API key and plug it in so that my Dolly API key is in this thing. And I haven't done that yet. So we'll make sure that y'all don't see that. <laughs> but uh, I did want, let's see here. I'm going to... First off, turn this music down to right about there. There we go. And uh, oh, am I pinging? Am I pinging? I don't think I am. All right. There we go. Okay. So what we're doing today is we're going to play around with comic book editors we're going to make some comic books i'm going to actually probably make a shorter like super cut version of this so maybe i'll even have an opening to this and stuff like that that we'll do in this uh live in the labs uh i don't know how long this is going to be but uh my dog has to be fed in about an hour so maybe an hour <laughs> maybe an hour okay i am going to let me just check here Make sure everything is going straight. Uh, we have to maintain live streaming, such an experience buffing, buffering. Let's see here. Just making sure. Can oh, it looks like everyone can see what's going on here, and it's live, and it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good to me. Okay. Just wanted to check my stats and make sure everything's going all right. Okay, you know what? 
we are done with the music okay and now we're in okay so what we are going to do today is we're going to play around with at least or just not not even at least two different things you will need to sign up for both of these things in order for you to use them so just fair warning for all of you uh, live people who are getting ready to watch this and maybe try and join in what we're doing today is we're making comic books um we're going to play around with it first we're going to show you uh, i've already played around uh, played around with ai comic factory just a little itty bitty bit i didn't put any blurbs or any boxes or anything in there but we're going to create a story and then we're going or even use an existing story and then we're going to see what we can create so let's see how fast we can do this and uh, we're going to start out here if you if you if you have hugging face then this is all going to be very normal looking to you if you do not have hugging face it is a place it is a repository of open source everything open source literally uh, large language models are put on hugging face uh stable cascade is on hugging face as a matter of fact i will show you a little bit of stable cascade in a split second uh because it's on hugging face and you're able to access it and play with it and see it, it's it's a great site for you to be able to play with things that are coming in the future or language models that you're able to tune to do what you want it to do. So if you want, I'm, I guess that's what this, uh, this video, the shorter version of this video should probably be called uh, making a, I don't know, making a comic book <laughs> with, uh, with artificial intelligence. Uh, how to make a comic book with artificial intelligence. You can make a comic book with artificial intelligence. That's probably what it should be. You can make a comic book with artificial intelligence? Question mark. <laughs> with me going, oh, you know, something. Uh, okay, so. Uh, I, You know what? I absolutely love going live streaming and like not letting anyone know <laughs> That it's there because it limits especially if it's a longer video then it limits the amount of people who actually watch the uh, live video and they can all have fun my you know everyone who wants to watch the long form but then I can break out little chunks I'm still working on some chunks that I built last week that are gonna come out in segments and I believe my cat is like about to lose her mind if she does not get in here. Hold on, I need to make accommodations for the grace. Gracie, where you at? Come on. There you go. Come on, little girl. Sorry about that, everyone. Okay, so we're going to start this video up. Let me let you all look, uh, take a quick peek at it. This is it right here. This is Hugging Face. And uh, this is Stable Cascade, which is a image generator. And this is Comic, AI Comic Factory. And I will show you how I found it and all of that stuff. So we will be playing with this extensively today. All right, let's get this party started. <laughs> behind the scenes, right? Behind the scenes. <sighs> Here we go, here we go. Hello, my name is Ikello Herod, and this is the Future Fiction Factory. And today, we're going to be diving deeply into two different comic book creators. One of them is open source, and the name of that one is AI Comic Book Factory. And the second one 
is something that I saw on Wes Roth's channel. Uh, if you haven't checked him out, he's this really cerebral, awesome guy with a great accent that does really insightful commentary on artificial intelligence and all of the emerging models that are coming. So I got a chance to look at this on his channel and I thought I would try it out in the labs. And as I was looking at Hugging Face, for another reason, I found at the very bottom that there was a trending of AI Comic Factory. And I clicked on it and played around with it for half of a second. And it was pretty intense, if I do say so myself. So what we're doing today is we're going to play around with these two products. We're going to start out inside of Hugging Face. Now, Hugging Face is a repository of open source projects. So you want to make sure that you sign up for Hugging Face. So that's huggingface.co. That's Hugging Face. Well, I'll actually put it in the caption right here. And what you're going to do is going to sign up for Hugging Face. And then you're going to look because they have a little search bar and you're going to look for AI comic book, uh, AI comic factory. Do not put comic book comic factory. Yeah. I played around with a little bit and it looks like if you put your own API key in there, you can use Dolly as the basis for this. Now, what I'd like to do more is maybe just get an idea of how it feels and what we can do with it. Uh, let's just start out with let's get into the actual cascade i mean uh, hugging face website when you pop on to hugging face you'll see here that there are whole this is the actual first thing you see when you finally sign in and you get verified on your email and all of that stuff and it'll have all of this stuff right here where it says all following things that I'm following. I'm looking at people who I'd, uh, who they want me to follow favorite AI creators, people who create things over here in this side, you can see over the last seven days over the last seven days that they've had uh, a lot of things trending Gemma bite dances, uh, SDXL Lightning, which is a text to image model. Uh, you can play with so many things on this. As a matter of fact, there's this one called Stable Cascade and Stable Cascade is a brand new model for creating images. So if we click over here and let's uh, think of an image to create a uh, ball headed black man with a lab coat on and look how fast it generates this let's see what happens if i and now i can and there it is that's the whole image and it has popped in and look at the quality of that image it's pretty amazing right there and i can even get into advanced quality uh things and i can modify this so i'm going to download that because i liked it and i'm gonna put chubby chubby and see how well it does 22 seconds was the last one Oh, wow. And look how fast this is popping in. There we go. And not quite done yet. And there it is. That's pretty good. Pretty good. As a matter of fact, that is a very, very good <laughs> picture. And you can find bunches of these projects right here, right here on Hugging Face. All right, so today we're going to be playing around with something called AI Comic Book Factory. I just, my thing just died. 
my, my uh, mouse, my mouse just died. So I'm going to have to probably edit this out of the final video. <laughs> I can't believe my mouse just died. Okay. Um, let me see here. Let me give it like another 10 seconds. And come on. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's see. I can't even actually switch over <laughs> without my mouse. I can't even actually, because I'm working on my Mac Mini, I can't even actually switch over to my other screen so I could see uh, maybe even chat with people in the chat or anything like that. <laughs> because this is hilarious. So how is everyone? I hope uh, maybe I'm not talking to anyone or maybe I'm talking to everyone. Well, how about this? Well, how about I just have a conversation with you right now? <laughs> I don't know what about, but um, uh, how about the fact that um, we are, there was, a, there was a paper that came out today. Uh, there, actually, it came out yesterday and it gives it gives a it's open source and it gives a uh, description and a breakdown of the fact that it can dynamically a, a a game or a picture or some type of other prompt to create like video or something can dynamically be manipulated so that you can talk tell it to do things in real time and it'll actually maybe change the direction of a car in a video or some kind of like interaction that happens right then and right there. And the first thing that popped into the person who uh, I was, whose video I was watching, I think it's called AI Explained. I watch a lot of these videos in order to understand how it's, how these AI things are going to affect the creative, right? And in AI Explained, there was this moment where he saw this paper about these autonomously, uh, these agents that were able to autonomously create dynamic changes within videos and pictures and stuff like that, how that could easily be at some point when there is enough compute that there could very well be a a moment where you could use Sora and have Sora dynamically changing and all of a sudden these things, all these video games and these ways that people built stuff before gets thrown out the window and these dynamic versions of our reality can be plastered either onto our eyeballs or in directly into our brain through a neural link or something like that. And then the person who is writing this stuff and the person who's creating all of these things becomes the individual. What is that world with us in it, people who create for a living? Well, I think maybe, just maybe, it very well may be that moment where, where individuality and people realizing that their stories are good, but this other guy's or this other gal's story is better than mine. That's when the value of that creative person, that real creative, pre of those real creative people will, will come in handy. It's going to be harrowing and fabulous all at the same time. Okay, now let's see if that little speech I just had gave me enough juice. Yes, okay. Now, back to our previously scheduled program. All right, now we are in our hugging face inner uh, place right here. Okay, I need to click off of that because I am on dictation, but I want to create a whole story and I don't, I don't want to write it out. <laughs> and so I've got the dictation turned on. As you can see over here, there's all kinds of stuff going on, on right here. This is what it gives you when it first pops up. It has four different grids, right? Zero, one, two, three. 
and each one of them are different. So you're on one, here's zero. This is what two looks like. And I don't think you can physically move these around. No. And here's what three looks like. So you've got quite a few options. So I'm going to use uh, three. And uh, over here, it has a whole list of different types. So you can have neural, which is uh, neutral, which is no style, which, if I'm not mistaken, still leaves you with all of this. There's a captions button. I haven't played around with this yet. It's got to be something. It, it's got to have something to do with uh, all of the dialogue that you're supposed to say. So let's figure out all that out together. Why don't we? Okay, let's click on captions uh, about this project. Might as well give credit where credit is due, y'all. The AI Comic Factory. What is the AI Comic Factory? The AI Comic Factory is a free open source application made to demonstrate the capabilities of AI models. And yes, you can use your own art to generate comic panels. The language model used to generate the story is Zephyr 7B Beta. Oh, I see. Uh, the, uh, the, the diffusion model used by default is LCM SD XL, which is fast, but does not have the highest quality. You can decide to use a slower model in the settings. The code is public and can be deployed at home with some changes in the code. See the readme for details about the architecture. That was dramatic. <laughs> uh, okay. Now that we've come to, now that we know what's going on, let's let's go with. It says there's a right up here. Let's get rid of this stuff. Okay. Now. Story prompt and style character prompt. So what I did was I just took a actual um, visual, a prompt from mid journey and just plugged it in to see. And then I took the actual character from that prompt and put that over in two and used those two together to create some abstract panels. But what we're going to do today is we're going to actually write. We're going to write a quick, quick and dirty story and make a, one, a, a character up, maybe a guy, a guy, a space guy. Um, how about. A benevolent Asian crime lord on a space station is confronted by two assassins and has to fight his way out of the situation. The main character looks like Chow Young Fat and is wearing black leather and has gray on his temples. So he's in his mid 50s. Period.
now we've got all of that information in here all we have to do now i think is hit go because that's all i did before and we'll see what happens with the captions turned on let's do this I love that little generating new story. <laughs> Let me see if I can zoom in. Nope. Nope. All right. Now you can see it's actually generating each one of the panels and it starts clicking through each one of them. It's looking at the story, having a having an absolute ball creating the story from I guess Zephyr 7b and okay well that doesn't make any sense yet and there's a woman that's half dressed and let's take a look what we have here wow it does put captions in but I think it put the captions in so that you can replace them later if I'm not mistaken assassin I guess peace shattered as assassins Ursa and Orion enter the lair okay Jalen let's see Jan Lee, the benevolent Asian crime lord, oversees his nefarious operations from a high tech lair orbit orbiting a remote planet, cyberspace like virtual screens light his face as he plots his next move. Well, the pictures aren't very good right here. Oh, this is neutral. This is neutral. I hit neutral. That's why it looks like this. And then it starts using and, and these ladies. Who are these ladies? That's what I want to know. Uh, Jalen defends herself fiercely. So she's supposed to be her, I guess. Or her. Who he is supposed to be him. And looks like as you hover over things, you can redraw them. You can edit them. Okay, let's see. How do you edit them? Uh, oh. So you can edit by actually clicking on the thing and then hitting edit. Okay. All right. So now we've seen this. And do we like it? Maybe not. Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. So, But what we're going to do is we're going to save it for later. And I mean, look at some of these panels. Look at some of these panels. That guy's got a head coming out of his head. This one, that's pretty good framing right there. Very cinematic. Also, also very cinematic. And looks like there's actually a little story that goes along with this. Now, let's save this down. You can see down in this corner right over here. You can hit save PDF. Oh. Actually, let me take my head away. Now you can see down here <laughs> this PDF. It says take my, uh, you can save as a PDF. You can share this or you can do something with custom models. We're going to get to the custom models thing in a split second, but let's save it as a PDF. And I'm going to just put this over here <laughs> on me and save that as a PDF. As a matter of fact, oh, I guess I can show you this. And this is what it looks like. It pops this up and kind of has this whole thing, one page of one page. I actually don't know if you can add a second page to it. Uh, but you can just save it as a PDF or see more. I guess you could save it maybe as something else. And uh, save all of the pages. And then it has more settings if you want, you know obviously printer settings obviously and so i'm going to save it and now that it's saved i can 
start all over again. So I'm going to zoom out and we're gonna start this over again, okay? But this time we're not gonna use that style. We're gonna go American Modern and then we're going to generate again and see what happens. See, that is the great thing about these particular models is that uh, these particular open source models, you can go back in again and again and really get a feel of what it's going to be. Oh, is it not going to regenerate the entire thing? Oh, it is. Okay. So there is something interesting. As you can see here, it still has that old stuff, but it looks like it's going panel by panel and wiping them out, as you can see right here. It is very interesting, and uh, you can tell it is the early inklings of something that could be very fascinating, uh, and especially since there's this thing down in the corner called Custom Models. Let's take a look at that. If I click on Custom Models, it says... Uh, Let's see, what does it say here? Most render, uh, most, uh, most vendors have a warm up delay when using custom or rarely used model. Do not hesitate to try again after five minutes if it happens. Security note, we do not ha uh, save your API credentials on our server, but inside your web browser using the local store uh, using local storage that's very important you know that your API key isn't getting out use server and and you'll have to redo your server key every time you click off of this window and close down you'll have to have you'll have to put the key back in but you otherwise <laughs> otherwise this is a very cool little thing okay so let's see and actually this is the first of two videos so this will be the first this is the first video of uh ai comic factory and then we will follow that video up with one of dash uh dash tune so which is for all of you live people just the second half of this video right here okay and um you can use custom hugging face models which is recommended you can use your you can use Dolly 3 for, by OpenAI. You can use Dolly 3 by OpenAI. You can use custom relay, uh, replica. Replicate model will uh, use your own account. And uh, this uses your own account. So if you click on the open AI one, right? It says Dolly three, and then you just enter in your token right there, and then you're good to go. I'm going to, I'm not going to do that today. What I'm going to do is we're gonna look and see exactly what happened when we changed it from no style whatsoever to American model, uh, modern. And whoa, what a difference. A day makes holy crap let's take a quick peek I mean that's that's pretty cool can you upscale this that's the part I want to know and it looks it it looks it looks good I don't think that I gave it enough information for it to <laughs> to make something but it definitely, it's definitely trying. <laughs> it's definitely trying. And this is why these are open source and on actual, uh, this, this is why these things are open source. And these are, this is why they are built like in the open so that a lot of other people can take them and iterate on them. This is a pretty fun little program. I hope you enjoy this. This one's fun. This one's fun. And you get different. Let's let's see if we can get one more. Let's go with vintage photo novel. 
what is a vintage photo novel? And we'll go and we'll gen generate the story with a vintage photo novel. And that will be the last thing that we, the last one we do. And while that's generating in the background, y'all, I want you to remember this is the worst it's ever going to be. This is the worst it's ever going to be. This is the worst that it's ever going to be. So I want you to understand that a lot of these things that are being developed right in front of you are going to get better and iterate. And then you, it's going to take all your money. Your money's all going to be taken by subscriptions in the future. And oh, and this, this is interesting. A benevolent. Why, why have I been getting these uh, heavy set gentlemen is what I'm wondering. Take a look. <laughs> I think benevolent must have made it. He does look like he's compassionate, though. And uh, he does seem to have very similar. The space station part, I think, is throwing it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm positive. The space station part is definitely throwing it. But it's definitely moving in the right direction. And if you plug in your own APIs, that means that uh, Dolly will understand a lot of what you're saying a lot better. And that's fascinating to me. Absolutely fascinating. Anyway, that, ladies and gentlemen, was, what is it called? AI Comic Factory. A really experimental, really, really very bleeding edge piece of technology, piece of AI technology for creating comic books. My name's Ikel O'Hara. This has been the Future Fiction Factory. I hope that you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. All right, everybody that's, laying, that's staying around, please don't leave, don't leave. I'm actually, that was just the end of uh, a video that I was making for uh, later consumption. <laughs> I, is there anybody there? Oh, hey, everybody, there we go. Uh, let's see here. Um, Cash, how are you? How you doing? Nice to see you. Uh, hi, LOL. Did I remember correctly that one of your goals has been to make a graphic motion novel? Yes, it really is. It really is. And that's why I keep working on these things in front of everybody because I'm looking for the perfect thing. Are y'all ready to play with Dash Tune next? Because that's what we're about to do. Uh-oh. Uh, looks like Cash redacted a message or two or something right here. Let's see. F Kitty. Hello, F Kitty. Nice to see you. I always uh, thought graphic novels should be a natural progression after novel or vice versa with anime or video. Yes. You know, the, the reason I was just so excited about this was uh, there is a consistent character function to mid journey that isn't quite a consistent character, but it's very, very close now where you can make multiple things happen and use each one of those panels. And then you can also use Dolly and it has a, there's a GPT that's been written that actually uses, that makes consistent characters. So you might be able to make different panels maybe even within the same picture and then take those and take them into something like magnifique um, AI and upscale that stuff and meet, create these great elaborate panels and everything. I am, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. So we're going to do the second one here in a split second. Let me see here. There we go. Um, view. Let's see. Yeah, I redacted some of the, you don't want to waste your time reading them. Uh, not important. <laughs> uh, you're funny. Uh, I guess you need to add uh, VR to that now. I guess you do because uh, Apple just dropped some VR. I mean, don't get me wrong. Meta was around this whole time, but 
Apple just dropped some serious VR. So, okay, so we're about to jump into Dash Tune here. Let me catch up on my reading here. Uh, good, Cash. I'm glad you're doing good. Thanks. Uh, novel will only be one product in a suite. I think it's the starting product in a suite, Kitty. Think about this. Everybody who is learning how to write or who is writing right now and trying to flesh out universes and everything, getting things intricately right, getting logic right, getting lore right, getting canon right. Imagine you not being the only person that cares about this, that there's another thousand people out there that give just as much of a flying flarney toad as you do, right? And so you create these things that you love, find those thousand people and they will all, they will keep you lifted up until the, until your uh, dying day. So there's a very strong possibility that could be, I don't know, very beneficial to you, you know, going into the future, help keep you alive, <laughs> pay your bills, stuff like that. That's a very powerful, powerful thought. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, uh, the only problem I have is that when it comes to close-ups and different camera angles, the consistency struggles. I think we have to remember this is the worst it's ever going to be. It's the worst it's ever going to be. So right now we're having trouble. It, it, we're working on consistency and people are doing a lot of workarounds for consistency and people are building GPTs for consistency and all of these things. There's a lot going into this. There is a program. There's a program called Artflow that I use that let me show you. This is called Artflow right here, and uh, sometimes, for some weird reason, it likes to make me into a white man sometimes, which I'm not really appreciating, <laughs> if I do say so myself. But uh, it does has, have a tendency to get me right when it gets me right. Uh, like here, I'm on a roller coaster trying to... Uh, playing around on a roller coaster look at me with hair it loves to decide to give me hair <laughs> i'm always like why do i have hair and see there i love these i love art flow this is a great great resource if you want to go to art flow and you can create for you can create one character for free okay so here's a character builder and you create an AI character. And I created one. I had 20 pictures of myself that I used, right? And I was able to train this to make that guy, that very fake me, but almost looks like me guy. <laughs> but looks like me guy. And I was able to create all of these pictures right here. Let's go literally all of these pictures all of these pictures some with me with hair look at this is what i look like with hair right here you want to see me with hair that's me with hair except my hairline would be more right like here and i'd have a widow's peak it would be widow's peaking on me <laughs> oh dear god all right so but this one is called art flow you can go over to app.artflow.ai and create your own today for free. You only get one, but then you get to create, you get like a hundred credits and one credit makes four pictures, right? And I mean, look, some of these, some of these guys are so white. It's ridiculous. Like if I had a son, like 40 years in the future, you know? But some of them are really good, you know, some of them make and all of them make me look skinny like this dude. I don't know. Just because I said running, it gave me hair and a widow's peak every single time. This is uh, me doing variants on one of these pictures down here that was sort of looked like me. And the more variants it did, the worse it looked. But <laughs> 
Okay, so, but you can see you can actually even take your own character. This is what I, the whole point of this is to show you that you can create consistent characters that do consistent things. So you can, as, it's, as you can see right here, it says consistent, uh, create consistent characters, design full body characters that uh, the way uh, you like, keep your appearance consistent across different scenes. And then you can literally make anything animate and create videos with those things. You may not be able to move the head around a lot, but you'll be able to move the lips and maybe put 11 labs or some kind of other recording in there. And here are a lot of their own characters that you can in, uh, you can place into other things and create videos with. So it's a fun little website that helps you with consistency. That's, that is definitely one of the things that I hear the most about is consistency. So um, let's see here. Entertain a sweet uh, true directors. If we keep this up until we are true directors. Yeah, and do me a favor, everybody. Every time new things come out, play around with them hardcore because you need to get a feel for the limitations of artificial intelligence so that when you are called on to do something truly amazing, right? to help a client or something like that, and they're paying you to do this thing, right? You will have all of this back knowledge of story and all of this back knowledge of everything, and it will help you to have a much, much more cohesive story told and much more compelling story told. Okay, so what are we doing here? Uh, also, uh, you can, uh, Kitty's saying, also you can have AI not only generate and refine, but will advise uh, standards, best practices, and dynamic shot critique. Oh, wow, yes, that is true. You can tell your own creative Christmas list. In, oh, you can tell... Uh, you can tell our creative Christmas list is evolving before us in live time. Has it, so did anybody else get really excited about Sora and the fact that that's the worst that Sora's ever going to be? That two papers that, like uh, Mr. Two Minute Papers himself says, what a time to be alive. <laughs> it's literally... One of those things where they, they're they right. Will Smith was eating spaghetti. And then one year later, with enough compute applied to it, we have really pushed back the veil. That might have been what Sam Altman uh, was, where what Sama Man was saying when he said that they pushed back the veil of knowledge. These are things are that the the consistency across multiple frames, the idea that these photos are actually these videos have higher quality and better action and better composition than even Dolly has. The fact that it understands all of that physics and motion and all of that stuff, this is crazy. All right, see, let's see here. There we go. Let's see. Uh, yes, Sora was amazing. Cash, you are right. Yes. Uh, programmer Christmas. <laughs> yes, Kitty. Uh, yes, it was great. And if you are a fringe artist, you can even run with the glitches. Yes, you can. You can. You can run with the glitches. That is true. Modular theory will fix the finger problem. But again, there is evolution in the sector. Finger problem, you mean actually how it renders fingers and stuff like that? Or are you, what are you saying specifically, Kitty? Um, and I, you're right. It's, there is a, I don't know. There is a opportunity, I think. 
uh, for people to start to understand these papers as they come out and start to think like creatively start thinking because as a science as a science fiction author every time a new paper comes out and i find something interesting about it i always think to myself how can i use that in my science fiction since it's evolving so fast that if i write it fast enough it might not actually be science fiction so how can i use that like i'll give you an example so this one paper today where it's dynamically dynamically uh using actual prompts to move things actually on the picture uh, the picture or the video to manipulate actual video that is created in something like sora or some lower res thing as a matter of fact they use really really low res pictures and video that they just fed into it and didn't tell it what it was feeding it in and what it was supposed to do with it and then it asked then they asked it to do stuff with that and manipulate it and turn things around and it was a revelation to me it made me it made my imagination absolutely pop it made me think to myself well what if you have that thing remember a few months ago somebody created a uh, South Park episodes where you could create actual South Park episodes. So think of that. Think of the autonomous agents that they built so that you could have uh, a town full of actual NPCs that have agency within themselves that live their lives, that go do their things, that are programmed to have these things happen in succession in a linear manner and then they have inject things into each one of their thoughts like your god and you say hey agent hey little teeny person in this little teeny imaginary digital simulation of a town why don't you have a party and uh, invite everybody in town everyone in town some people might not be able to go some people might not actually need to be working your party there might be a band who knows but you put that kernel into the thought and then, and then it goes off and it decides to create this entire reality where it has to invite people and invite and get things set up and go to the grocery store all of these things are set up and it is an autonomous agent that is just going about his business and for all pretense and purposes, that little itty bitty agent might actually be in a little way sentient. Enough to make arbitrary decisions of left and right, which way to go, how to do things. So that right there to me is one of those moments where I put that together with Sora, with this idea of manipulation and all these papers say to me that at some point we're going to be able to put glasses on our face that aren't very big glasses that show things in front of our face where we can watch things and listen to stuff. And I've seen the technology already at CES where they are flat glasses and they use a projector that actually projects directly onto the glass and that propagates across the entire glass uh your entire eyeglasses it propagates across the entire eyeglasses so it would be a little projector that goes right into the glass it isn't a thing with double this or mirrors and stuff like that it's just a pair of sunglasses so imagine a world where you have those glasses and you can have t some type of sensors in there that have spatial awareness and basically everything that you see in the Apple Pro, you can do with flat glasses and you're walking around the house and you have actual permanence of screens all over the place. And then you decide you want to be in an immersive uh, atmosphere and you maybe change into your more immersive set of either glasses or headset of some sort. And then you decide, 
you're a gamer and instead of playing a regular game like back in the day you decide you want to go to this virtual world and just spend time and have time to talk to these people or things that live inside of your own computer that have permanence and every time you turn the game on the artificial intelligence remembers because of its million word i mean a million um token context window it remembers everything that you said in the last conversation y'all had and then <laughs> things start getting weird because what if they build these large language models and neural nets so that they have loops on them and there are things that are really incredibly important that get ported into short term sort of short access quick access memory and then everything else is still stays within the uh, context so something shows up inside the context six seven times it gets shunted over as a long-term mem uh, as a memory that should stay around for a very very long time so i think this is what they're building right now and i think this is what they're trying to prepare us for and I think that's why they released Sora. It was because they knew that this is starting to get weird. Super weird. And people need to be prepared. Boy, that was a rant. I don't know if I'm going to get to that second video about Dash Tune. I will show all of you live people the Dash Tune, though. Let's see here. Sora Amazing. Great Glitches. Revolution Sector. Oh, Modular Theory. We'll fix the finger problem, but again, the revolution sector. Yes, the composition of hands, hooves, paws. Either they can't figure it out or they are negotiating entry bars into the field or just haven't got to the modular, modularity, modularization for efficiency. Uh, it says uh, agents are modules waiting to be used uh they are and so yes they are yeah they really are and uh i think once we have once we have these uh, our home-based computers these things are, that are going to change uh are going to be used specifically to house the thing that creeps out with us into the real world. Uh, say you want to go to the airport. We'll do the classic airport example. Say you want to go to the airport and you have um, some type of sound system like an Echo from Amazon or a Apple thing or something like that. Siri, something like that. And uh, you just say either to your phone or to your rabbit or whatever that particular device is that's kind of autonomously always listening in your house. You say to it that you want it to you want it to uh, get you a car and take you to the airport. When you get to the airport, uh, when you get to your destination after you get off of the plane, so you skip. You just say, because it should have all the information about your flight, all of that stuff. And you skip all of that information and you go directly to, when I finally get to Istanbul, let's go ahead on and uh, book me at such and such a place. I want to make sure there's a car there for that. And um, I need transportation from the restaurant home. And then we're good to go. Uh, out from the restaurant to the uh, to the hotel, and then I'm good to go. Make sure all of my bags and everything get dropped off at the hotel and are waiting in my room when I get there. That should be an easy thing for it to do eventually. Once you have autonomous agents, once you have a lot of technology that they are developing right now, this is really a lot of fun. Uh, LOL, the kids are going to suck bandwidth by orders of magnitude when they uh, this gets rolling. As they are. I mean, it's uh, just the gamers alone will will 
make this is why seven trillion dollars doesn't make doesn't make me cringe because I believe that it's probably merited that we need seven billion dollars worth of stuff. So, okay, let's uh, show y'all Dash Tune. This is Dash Tune, everybody. And I should make a video on this right now, but I'm not. I'm just going to show you what it is. So I want you to go to Dash Tune, and we're going to do a live stream about Dash Tune tomorrow. That's what we're going to do. But as you can see here, it has drama, romance, content, Dash Tune. All right, so let's uh, click on some of these and see what happens. Atypical romance. Sophia betrayed her husband, Pete, and cousin Chloe finds unexpected love with a stranger, Mr. Sharpshooter. Episode one, free. Let's see. Okay. Episode two. All right. So let's click on one of these and see what, what happens. Swish. Swish, we have a problem. Your one can't. You're the one who can't have children. Even the tests say so. Hillside Hospital. Okay, so this is obviously a graphic novel. Okay, this is, I like, I like the art style. It looks very consistent. That is not your home. Okay, so is this the same woman? Yes, it's the same woman. And is this the same woman? Now that looks, okay, that's her, that's her lips at least. Sort of looks like her, not in the same outfit, but kind of the same outfit. Sort of looks like her. So this is what you, this is the output. This is the output that you can get from Dash Tune. Yeah, look at these. These are pretty good. If these are done right up, oh, she changed. Oh, nope. Same color. So look at this. This is a different girl. And they've got the correct outfits on. Yeah, she's pregnant, looks like. The doctor says it's a boy. What? Chloe, we are cousins. Do you have no shame at all? He is my husband. How shameless can you be? Stop that, Sophia. Chloe is going to be the mother of my child. You can't talk to her like that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, as you can see, This is pretty, okay, let's go to see if there's some something more superhero-like. Let's click out of this. Is there any? Sky Flute sci-fi drama. Here's the first episode. After an experiment went wrong, on Earth, Sky Bennett has transmigrated to Iron Helm, Starcrest, and he replaced the sky of his new world. Although terrifying, he was lucky to get an upgrading system. The one-click cultivation system. No worry about martial arts skill, uh, martial skills. One click had already reached the maximum level one man cannot have expertise in the martial arts, alchemy skills, and spell skills, but Sky aims to claim them all. Holding the system in his hand will he conquer the universe. Okay, so you can go over here and click on all of these and see what the actual output is. This is pretty good. I like the style. You definitely can seem to be able to do specific styles. 
I, uh, I was a normal college kid on Earth. A freak explosion sent me to Starcrest. Then my soul ended up in a strange body. I took over a guy who was all, uh, also Sky Bennett. Who was also Sky Bennett? The Sky was the son of Henry Bennett, the chief of one of the Iron Helm's two top families. But despite being rich and influential, he sucked at powering up. He was known as a loser and the Bennett's loathed him. A couple of days ago, something went down in the Bennett home. The people who sided with Chief clash with another group. Yeah, this is cute. Sky got mixed up in it and set him up while he was hunting in the ranger field. Oh, and he died. Then when Earth's Sky took his place, he woke up here right then. With our families dead sure. I bet the with the new one. Yeah, this is so you tell me. This looks compelling, doesn't it? This looks like it could work. Alright, so go over to Dash Tune and check that out. I will try to I I will uh I'll put all of this stuff inside of the, I'll put these two, I'll, the, at least to the hugging face with uh, AI comic factory and dash tune dash tune. <laughs> all right, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed this. I've got to go feed my animals and uh, let me just check out one real quick. Woo. Let's see. Composition. Agents are modular. It's good beginning. Uh, yeah. So as you can see, we have ourselves a real comic book creator and a starting comic book creator. I'll do a deeper dive into Dash Tune tomorrow. I'm done for the day. I hope that you all enjoyed this, and I will see you all. In the next video, video, video. I don't sing enough, I think. <laughs> All right, everyone. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye.